friends, my name is Lauren. Today we're going to do a comparison between God's design, heaven and earth for beginners, and the good and the beautiful, little hearts and hands, fields and flowers. They're both a kindergarten to second grade curriculum. They both are very different. And so I'm going to do a flip through and an in-depth look at what they each look like and what they each offer. And then I'm going to share how we use them because we actually use both of them together this year. So first we have God's Design Heaven and Earth for Beginners. This is from Masterbooks. They have another God's Design series for older kids. Um, so they do have a Heaven and Earth for older kids, but this again is for that kindergarten to second grade level. This one covers weather in water, universe, and planet Earth. They do have a life, um, like life in plants or something. It's the human body, animals, and plants that they cover, but I decided for this year we would go with this one. So it is going to have three different units. Each unit has 35 lessons. You could easily do a lesson a day. Um, it gives an introduction. There's a special project. And then here is a list of supplies. So as you can see, it is mostly just household supplies, nothing too extreme or extravagant. So, and each, uh, it's for, it's based on each unit too. So water, planet, earth. And then here's a sample schedule. It is to be done three to four days per week. We only do it twice a week, and um, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it this year, but uh, you could do it as many days a week as you want, kind of make your own schedule. This is just a sample, and it will be 36 weeks. Okay, so it's gonna go through, and it's gonna have a little lesson, and then it is gonna have some comprehension questions at the end, which I really like, kind of making sure we kind of summarize and that they were paying attention and listening. There's always gonna be some sort of tracing that they have to do. And then there is usually some sort of either hands-on activity or written activity. And uh, my daughter, my youngest one in first grade, she really likes to do both. So this is perfect for her so she could, um, fill in the missing letters and then trace that and then match it the summer, the word to its picture season. I actually had not been making her do the handwriting or the tracing rather, but now I have recently started with that. So again, it's gonna have some little, um, it's gonna have a little paragraph. This as a little small, anytime you see this handprint, it's gonna have a small activity that they can do and they're very simple, very easy. I am not a hands-on, uh, like science project lover mom. I will do them, but these ones I promise are not bad at all. At least we haven't come up across any ones that were re really difficult or, you know, time consuming or required a lot of, you know, crazy supplies or anything like that. And then again, some sort of little drawing activity. So what I like about this is the lessons are short and sweet very age appropriate. They're really good for that kindergarten, first grade, second grade. I actually, when my third grader um, was going to homeschool this year, she was actually going to do this. So I honestly think you could, if you have maybe a more reluctant child who doesn't love science, but wants to do something that's simple and to the point and has kind of hands-on, but also sort of like worksheet style, this is really good. So I'm going to kind of flip through and you can get an idea of what this is going to look like. At the end of like, I think, how many lessons was that? So about every eight lessons or so, there is gonna be a review. And um, so this one was a crossword puzzle. Sometimes it's a fill in the blank. It just depends, but it kind of just summarizes the last eight lessons. So this is really fun too, because you can kind of go back and see like what has actually retained. And as you can see, I mean, there's definitely a variety of things that they're learning about. Uh, it does not go in very deep. It's not gonna get into a whole, you know, extreme, but you know, in first grade, how deep does their science really need to be? Like, let's be honest here. See, here's that review. We're not there yet, but this one will be like a fill in the blank. So I'll just kind of do a flip through so that you can get an idea. The 
unit review for this one is two pages. Um, and now they are completely done with weather and water and now they are on to the universe. Now we're actually going to be skipping this unit because we had already learned about space last year. We took we took several months to learn about that. So, I mean, it's not that she couldn't use the refresher. We're just, I'm trying to do what we haven't covered. And so since we've already done that, I'm going to skip the space, but I'll show it to you just so that you can get an idea as well. So there's no tests, there's no quizzes. You can, um, you might, if you want to, if you have to test or something for some reason or have to submit grades for your state, you could always use the unit reviews. Um, that would be a good option to have. But otherwise, it's a pretty, um, I feel like it's more relaxed and laid back program. Okay, so now we have finished up with um, space and then they're gonna finish the last unit will be planet Earth so they will do earth science okay and so we're finished here so there is an answer key for each unit, which is awesome because I'm sure we probably know the most of the answers, but just in case, it never hurts to have an answer key in the back. So I'm always about that. Can you get an idea for that. And what each unit is gonna have its own. And then that is it. So that is heaven and earth for beginners. We are liking it, we're enjoying it. My daughter loves the simple hands-on projects, but she also likes the coloring and the you know activity pages. So she really loves that aspect about it. Now we're gonna bring in little hearts and hands. And this is from The Good and the Beautiful. Now this is adorable as well. This is so sweet and so cute. Um, I wanted, I really love picture books. And again, I don't love super heavy hands-on type things. Um, so the science for beginners or heaven and earth was perfect. And I had already ordered that last year, but then I saw this come out. I was like, oh my goodness, I have to do this too. I have to figure out how I can do both. So I did it and I, it's working and I'm making it work and I'll show you how we are doing that. So first of all, as you can see, this is gonna be fields and flowers, but it will cover uh, some bugs and things like that as well. So it's a little bit of life science in this book and then earth science in the other. So I like that it's in mixture of the two we're getting a little bit of both worlds so yeah butterflies and honeybees and ants so it's not just plants that they're talking about it's going to be a little bit of both and this is going to have 30 lessons in it so I thought this was perfect if I did this once a week one lesson a week that'll give us 30 weeks worth of material and then heaven and earth for beginners I can do those two units twice a week and that'll bring us out to the end of the year so let's do an overview of this. This is about this course, what it includes, the lesson overview, um, some frequently asked questions, correlated books. I did not get these. Um, you can, I just didn't, because A, I didn't realize until I had already bought it, and B, I was just like, ah, we'll be okay without it. We have a lot of other books. So some activity supplies, again, very minimal, minimal, very easy supplies that you should probably have already in your house. There's not really a lot of activities here. Okay, so we're gonna do lesson one. It's gonna start with a little opening, and so the opening is either like a poem or some like attention grabbing little, you know, activity. Um, and so it's always, always gonna have an opening, and you're always gonna read a small portion to your child. And then it's gonna say either movie time or story time. And depending on which one, you're going to be um, watching a little like two minute sort of um, like documentary type thing. 
Um, it's narrated by someone who works for The Good and the Beautiful and they show just kind of real life example, video examples of whatever you're talking about. So trees that live in sleep, this one was on deciduous trees. So we watched that and again, they're literally like two to three minutes and it looks like a documentary style, but it's more kid and you know, kid appropriate. And then there's always discussion questions at the end and then an optional activity. So this one is like a leaf, um, what is it called? Leaf rubbing activity that you could do. And um, so the activities, again, are very simple, uh, but just cute and definitely age appropriate. Um, so then lesson two would be another opening. Here is a poem. Here is a little spiel about what you're gonna talk about. And then story time. And then you would read the story from the big book of science books, science stories. And this, is kind of what sold me on this curriculum. Uh, just seeing this, because again, like I said, I love picture books, and a lot of times it's hard to find science picture books that go along with it. I'm not a fan of Usborne books, so I love this style. So it's gonna have a little sweet little picture or story, and it's gonna be talking about, so again, that was on um, this is on evergreen trees. So it's going to be kind of talking about and giving scientific facts about evergreen trees and some scientific little blurbs here and there and all about that, but in a story form. So it keeps it really engaging for the kids as well. And they're not super long. So that was it. And maybe like seven or eight pages. So here is kind of an overview of what the picture book is going to look like. Um, and it's going to alternate between um, picture book and between little story time. I honestly like the picture books better <laughs> than the stories, but or than the movies, which you know the little documentaries. But that's just me. They are really done really well. So you can get an idea. Okay. So that is the big book of science stories. So cute, I love it. And then again, we'll have some discussion questions with the answers and an activity. This is to find a few pine cones and branch from the evergreen tree in your neighborhood or at a craft store. Allow the children to dissect and explore them and have the child pull needles off the branches and examine those. So again, not too crazy, nothing too um, like messy or time consuming or anything. Uh, but if you do wanna do, if you are, a more hands-on mom you obviously can add more to this and build on top of this it's totally you know you can the sky's the limit you can make it your own but um that is just if you kind of feel obligated like me to like do all the activities uh you i prefer the ones that are a little bit simple but still fun and engaging for the kids so here i'll just do a flip through you can get an idea of what it's gonna look like I will definitely say this is certainly more if you have a younger child and you're debating between the two, uh, I would, my, and you can only choose one, this one might be a little bit better for a younger child. Again, they both can, well, this one might be just a smidge easier for like a kindergartner. Um, not that the other one isn't great, it is, it's just this one if you're having to choose between the two. If you have an older one, maybe second grade, um, I feel like you could go with either one, but they might be more engaged with the heaven and earth um, just because there's more things to, to write and more, you know, there's no writing in here. There's no, as you can see, it's just, these are the only two components. There's no physical anything that they do. They're just observing and, or they're just like consuming really, except the activities. This one, they're writing more, they're doing a little bit more, more projects and they're doing, um, more activities as far as like word searches and crossword puzzles and fill in the blanks and, and tracing the words and verses and things like that. So if you're, again, I think they're both totally appropriate for either age, but if you're trying to decide between the two, um, those might be something to just consider. And that is pretty much it. Um, they're both really good. We love them. I love doing science with my daughter. She loves to do this. Uh, she 
really likes science and she likes to do both of them. She never complains or anything. She just listens and she actually does absorb quite a bit. So in my opinion, definitely both get a thumbs up. As I always say, hopefully you found that helpful and that you were able to get a better picture of what they look like and kind of have a direction of if you want to use one of these programs. I really love both of them for different reasons and I love doing them together. It has worked really, really well for us. You of course don't have to. This is just what works really well for us and for our homeschool this year. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also leave a comment if you have used either of these or if you have used something similar that you would like to recommend as well. I always love looking at different curriculums, so I'd love to see what you use. If you're interested in yet another science, I have an Abeka second grade curriculum that I did, uh, flip through and review that I did. I will link that right here so you can go check that out. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you have the best day. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.